Norway is a land of breathtaking landscapes and natural wonders. It's a country where much of nature is accessible to all, but beneath that beauty lie terrible secrets, known to only a few. Among these hidden treasures is the enigmatic Plura Cave, a mysterious underworld that has long captivated the hearts of adventurers around the globe. But for seasoned diver Jared Hires, this would become his final resting place. This is the horrifying story of the Plura Cave Dive, and the event that led up to that fateful day. Jared Hires was a true adventurer, a U.S. cave explorer with an impressive track record. At 33, he was the general manager of Dive Right, an equipment manufacturer founded by his father, Lamar, back in 1984. Dive Right began producing specialized gear for tech diving pioneers, and over the decades, it evolved into a brand known for both extreme and recreational diving gear. Growing up in the heart of northern Florida's cave country, Jared was immersed in the technical diving tradition from a young age. Dive Right, originally a family business, saw Lamar take full control in 1997, becoming its CEO, with Jared's mother, Leanne, as CFO. Just last month, the company kicked off celebrations for its 40th anniversary. Jared's journey into the depths began early. At around 14, he started formal cave training, and by 15, he became the youngest certified closed-circuit rebreather diver. DiveRight had recently launched its own rebreather, the Optima, a testament to the company's innovative spirit. Diving was his escape, his happy place. He honed his cave diving skills locally and became a scuba diving instructor by 18. This certification was particularly significant for him, as it marked his first achievement independent of his father's guidance. Jared didn't stop there. He became a TDI technical rebreather, cave and cavern instructor, and it was clear he was destined to work for the family business. From helping price tag products as a boy to regularly assisting in the shop and taking calls from age 14, Jared's path was set. After graduating from the University of Florida in 2013, Jared dove headfirst into the business, gaining experience in manufacturing, servicing, and marketing. He rose to become DiveRight's general manager, taking on some of the world's most challenging cave systems. His adventures spanned Mexico, Russia, Hungary, and locations in Norway, Israel, and the Bahamas. Jared was a seasoned cave diver and rebreather expert, navigating the underwater labyrinths with skill and determination. The surprising thing is that Jared had already tackled the Plura Cave, the deepest cave in Northern Europe, two years before. This time, he was back with a squad of elite cave divers from around the globe. On the afternoon of April 3rd, Jared and two fellow divers plunged into the abyss, aiming to reach the mysterious wedding chamber and test their gear. But before we follow them inside the cave, let's set the stage. The Plura Cave system is a diver's dream and nightmare rolled into one. As the deepest cave in Northern Europe, it's the crown jewel of Scandinavian cave diving. Rana, where Plura is located, is a popular destination for avid cave divers, but many of its underwater systems are not suitable for human exploration. While few accidents have happened in Plura, the cave system has still claimed its fair share of lives. Visibility is as far as your light can shine, but the water is bone chilling, ranging from a frigid two degrees in winter to a slightly less freezing, four to seven degrees in summer. And in winter, the entrance is buried beneath a sheet of ice. Yet, Plura Grotto remains accessible year-round to divers who dare to brave the brisk waters. The popularity of Plura Grotto stems from its vibrant, colorful caves, which amateur diving hobbyists often explore before returning to the surface. However, highly trained and curious individuals may be more inclined to continue on a course that plunges them deeper into the narrow cave system. Divers who choose to venture forward are faced with extremely narrow passages, ice-cold temperatures, and pitch-black water. After navigating a sump, an underground pocket of water, divers will finally ascend to the cave of Steinugelflaget. Roughly 90 meters above the cave's vaulted ceiling lies the exit of the cave, a crack in the collapsed side of a hill. Accessible through the Plura River, the cave's limestone and marble formations create narrow, jagged passageways and vast chambers. So despite two of the divers having made the journey already, they knew they had to be extremely cautious. On that fateful day, Jared and his two teammates, armed with their top-notch rebreathers and thermal gear, descended into the icy darkness for what should have been a routine check dive. 
They wanted to ensure their equipment was in perfect condition for an even deeper dive planned for the next day. Little did they know, this dive would turn into a nightmare. With the dive leader taking the lead, followed by their teammate, Jared brought up the rear. The first half of the dive was smooth sailing, hitting a maximum depth of 34 meters or 110 feet. After 30 minutes, they surfaced in the eerie, air-filled wedding chamber, marking the halfway point of their dive. They checked their gear, exchanged a few words, and confirmed everyone was feeling good. Then, after a mere two-minute breather, they plunged back into the abyss, maintaining their formation with the dive leader up front and Jared at the back. Everything seemed fine until minute 16 of the second dive. Suddenly, Jared's log recorded a dramatic drop from 25 meters or 82 feet to 29 meters or 95 feet in less than 20 seconds. At that moment, the dive leader had turned to assist their teammate, who was fumbling with a backup light after their primary failed. As they reconfigured their positions, the dive leader noticed Jared's light flailing wildly. Then, they heard it, Jared's muffled screams echoing through the water, trying desperately to communicate a problem. In the underwater world of rebreathers, divers can sometimes make out basic communications, thanks to the quieter system. Jared's screams were unmistakable, reverberating through the cave's silent, frigid waters. It was a cry for help, a desperate attempt to convey that something was terribly wrong. When the dive leader reached Jared, he was already in full tonic-clonic convulsions. His rebreather loop was out of his mouth, but the mouthpiece was closed, a sign that Jared knew it was coming out and had tried to prepare for a bailout. He had flicked the switch to close the loop, but tragically, he couldn't get the bailout regulator into his mouth before the seizures took hold. Despite the dive leader's desperate attempts to secure Jared's airway, Jared continued to convulse. The dive leader made the harrowing decision to swim the still convulsing Jared towards the exit, a grueling 250 meter or 800 foot journey with multiple depth changes. After about three minutes, Jared stopped seizing. The dive leader tried again to insert a regulator into Jared's mouth, but found his jaw clenched shut. Realizing time was running out, the dive leader signaled to their teammate to swim ahead as fast as possible to alert the surface and call for assistance. A diver at the surface met them near the exit and helped bring Jared to the surface. They surfaced after 31 minutes, which was 17 minutes after the onset of Jared's convulsions. CPR was initiated immediately. Oxygen and AEDs were ready and used in conjunction with local EMS response, arriving by ambulance and helicopter. Tragically, despite nearly two hours of resuscitation efforts, Jared could not be revived. After the tragic incident with Jared, new details emerged that shed light on what might have gone wrong. His family revealed he had experienced an unprovoked seizure last year, and there's a history of unexplained seizures linked to stress and dehydration in his family. Despite feeling rested on the day of the dive, he had recently battled a viral infection and the aftermath of international travel, which can seriously strain your body even if you're feeling okay. Regarding concerns about oxygen levels, thorough checks indicated that there were no significant issues before the dive. Dive computer records didn't show any signs of oxygen-related problems, so all signs pointed to Jared suffering a sudden medical event, possibly another seizure, which can strike without warning especially after a first-time occurrence. So despite heroic efforts by the dive team, at the end of the day, there was only so much they could do. This tragedy underscores the importance of understanding personal health risks before embarking on demanding underwater adventures like the one at Plura Cave. That wraps up this heartbreaking tale of Jared Heyer's final dive in Plura Cave. Do you think there should be stricter guidelines or medical screenings required for divers before undertaking challenging dives like those in Plura Cave? Share your thoughts in the comments below. And if you want to hear more gripping stories from the world of diving and exploration, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel before leaving.